Hey guys, welcome to Retro Peace Theater. So yesterday on social media, I posted that I wanted to record some games that you guys wanted to see played. And this one goes out to a good friend of mine, Lorelai, who lives over in London. Uh, Lorelai requested anything Zelda. So naturally I'm going to pick my favorite Zelda game of all time, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This is the Nintendo 64 version, not the 3DS version. The 3DS version is fine, has some cool features and, and little changes they made, but it's easier to stream the 64 than it is my 3DS. So, all right. We're going to put the name of our character is going to be Retro. And here we go. <clears throat> In the vast, deep forest of Hyrule, long have I served as the guardian spirit. I am known as the Deku Tree. The children of the forest, the Kokiri, live here with me. Each Kokiri has his or her own guardian fairy. However, there is one boy who does not have a fairy. <laughs> this game, when it came out in 1998, was absolutely beautiful. It was the first 3D Zelda game we had um, on an actual like console. Uh, I'm not counting the. There were some weird Zelda games that came out um, for just knockoff games that were terrible. Um, I can't even think of them at the moment. I'm spacing entirely. But this was the first 3D Zelda game we got. Navi. Navi, where art thou? Come hither. And I remember just being blown away by what it was and what it was capable of. Oh, Navi the fairy. Listen to my words, the words of the Deku Tree. Dost thou sense it? The climate of evil descending upon this realm. Malevolent forces, even now, are mustering to attack our land of Hyrule. For so long, the Kokiri Forest, the source of life, has stood as a barrier, deterring outsiders and maintaining the order of the world. But, before this tremendous evil power, even my power is as nothing. It seems the time has come for the boy without a fairy to begin his journey. The youth whose destiny it is to lead Hyrule to the path of justice and truth. Navi, go now. Find our young friend and guide him to me. I do not have much time left. Fly, Navi, fly. The fate of the forest, nay, the world, depends upon me. That's a lot to lay on the feet of it. You have a kid, you know? Here you are, the all-powerful and great Deku Tree. Surely you could appoint anybody. And But it wouldn't be an adventure, and it wouldn't be an RPG, and it certainly wouldn't be a Zelda game if fate and the universe wasn't involved somehow. This was beautiful here. Now, as I understand it, and I could be wrong, and I'm sure somebody in the comments will correct me, I believe all of these backgrounds that you see, all these images, are basically one giant image that's just overlaid on the whole thing. So it's the game only has to load basically one image file instead of loading, you know, separate images for each section of a 3D object. Um, it speeds up the way that it's rendered allows you for more seamless gameplay without crazy loading. Hello, Retro, wake up! I hate Navi. I'm not even gonna do her voice because she's just, in fact, I'm gonna skip through most of her dialogue because it's unneeded exposition. And she's kind of a jerk. This is like the one drawback I have to this game is that I can't stand Navi. Um, she is useful at times, but in the beginning part of the game, she's just the annoying sidekick. 
So the Deku Tree has asked her to partner with the kid. And now we need to go see the Deku Tree. Now I have played this game a lot, so I'm going to be kind of as much as possible. Um, I'm going to be trying to uh, adjust on the fly for getting things done quickly. Um, I'm going to skip a lot of the little things that you might normally find out about and just go straight to the things. Um, I think I am going to change controllers though, because this is feeling a little clunky to me. Um, and sticking. It is an original controller, so it's probably pretty worn out. So I'm going to pause the recording and I'm going to come right back. Okay, I'm back. Alright, that's a little better. Uh, so I don't really need to talk to Saria, but she comments about how I finally got a fairy and yada 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 yada. And now I have to go see the Great Deku Tree. And what's interesting about this is this is one of the first times I remember, and I'm sure I'm overlooking something, but this is one of the first times I remember um, your character, Link, registering that he talked to somebody. In most of the cases, it's just him. I guess, I, guess, I take that back. I guess there were instances in other games where we had the assumption that he was responding to something, but for the most part it was people just talking to him. And there's a lot of jokes about Link being just a mute kid. Um, I'm gonna go get the sword here in a moment, but there are... We also need to get 40 rupees. Um, so that we can buy the Deku Shield, so I'm just gonna run around and collect some rupees and stuff real quick. Um, and actually, I'm just going to go ahead and get the sword now, because then I can chop up grass and hopefully get some rupees quicker. And there's other ways to get to the Deku Tree without getting the sword and shield first. Um, this game actually has a lot of glitches, and if you're ever interested, there's a lot of people that have done a lot of really cool uh, things with glitches in this game um, but I don't have the time nor patience to try to execute them all and really this is just a fun playthrough you know so we're gonna play the game as it was intended um, so here we get the Kokiri sword dun, 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 dun. Whip and save. Okay. Now we're going to try to not get hit by this boulder. But there's some rupees here that we can get as well. And if we get hit by the boulder, it's not the end of the world. There's plenty of places where we can get hearts right now. That, you know. But if we can avoid it, we should. One of the other fun mechanics that I liked they added to this was that you could hack up signs. And, spoiler alert, you get an Ocarina of Time um, later on here in a bit. Um, and the Ocarina is like a, a handheld, like, I mean, it's a flute, basically. And, like, a really advanced harmonica looking thing. I don't really know how you would classify it, maybe. Some people who play, you know, woodwind instruments can clarify it for me. But anyway, you get different songs throughout the game. It's part of what makes the soundtrack to this game so phenomenal. 
but one of the songs you get uh, if you um, destroy a sign with a bomb or with your sword, uh, you can get um, the sign restored back to one piece. Sorry, it's difficult to play and talk at the same time. But my goal in this playthrough is to um, get all the way through the first dungeon, and then we'll just kind of take it from there. Uh, if you guys like what I'm doing and want to see me do more, you know, I'm happy to keep recording this. I love this game so much. Um, Yeah, in this first part, hearts are everywhere. Alright, I need four more rupees, and then I can get... And I know where there's a fiver. It is up there. So we'll just go this way. And you know... Even though these graphics are a bit blocky and a bit limited compared to what, you know, if you've played Breath of the Wild today or, you know, even what games that came after this were like, like, uh, um, Twilight Princess and, you know, the graphics definitely got better over time, but this game still, still stands up after, you know, 20 plus years. Um, and I think it's because you have quality gameplay, you still have, you know, they made it as beautiful and as attractive as they could, you know, with the limitations, um, that they had at the time, you know, so kudos to Nintendo, you guys really put your hearts into this one. Alright, so I've got everything I need to go to see the Deku Tree, and we'll get going with the first dungeon, which is, it's going to go pretty quick. And this is Milo. He's just kind of a jerk that's going to block your way. Tells you you need at least a sword and shield. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm skipping all the dialogue because, you know, I can't. I'll read the important stuff. Deku sticks are one of my favorite items in the game. They're actually really strong as a weapon, but you're going to see them used quite a bit in this dungeon coming up. Oh, Navi, thou hast returned. Retro, welcome. Listen carefully to what I, Deku Tree, am about to tell thee. Lies Sambo, these past moons must have been restless and full of nightmares. As the servants of evil gain strength, a vile climate pervades the land and causes nightmares to those sensitive to it. Verily, thou hast felt it. Retro, the time has come to test thy courage. I have been cursed. I need you to break the curse with your wisdom and courage. Dost thou have courage enough to undertake this task? Yes. Then enter brave Retro, and thou too, Navi. Navi the fairy, thou must aid Retro. And Retro, when Navi speaks, use the see up button to listen well to her words of wisdom. I always imagine that, like, on the back of his shield, you have the C buttons, um, and you can, you know, Navi's trying to talk to you, so you push the button on the shield, and then she can talk. I think it would be a comical fourth wall break. Um, okay. So, immediately we're going to go up. So... One common theme that's been throughout Zelda dungeons is that in every dungeon you get a weapon, and that weapon, um, like a special weapon you can only get in that dungeon, um, is going to be used to 
beat the dungeon. You can't beat the dungeon without it. Or at least it'll be extremely difficult. Um, which is really, if you know that going into it, it makes boss fights easier because once you get said special weapon, it gives you a clue on how to beat the boss, which is, you know, crucial. Yeah, let's see. So we got the map. Ah! Oh, my bad. Didn't mean to fall. I went to rub my eye and misjudge the <laughs> jump. Okay, back up we go. That's right. In previous Zelda games to this one, if you wanted to jump, it required the use of a special item, like a feather. Sometimes in games it was called Rock's Feather, R-O-C. Um, Rock's Feather. And... Um, it allowed you to jump, otherwise you, you couldn't jump over holes. And the fact that they added a mechanic where you could just run towards a ledge and automatically jump actually is really useful. Forgive me, master. If I give you a clue, will you let me go? When you jump off a high cliff, if you hold forward, you will roll on the ground when you land and won't get hurt from the fall. I can't guarantee it will work, though. If the cliff is really, really high, heh <laughs> Well, try it if you're feeling bold. So, that's a clue to what we're going to need to do here in a minute. Um, first, we're going to go in here. And we're going to get the slingshot. going to equip some stuff. So first I'm going to equip the Deku Sticks and I'm going to equip the Slingshot. So we're going to need the Slingshot here in a moment to get out, but first I'm going to climb up here and get this treasure chest. Get out of here. Okay. We are already about a third of the way done with this dungeon. Here, but I don't actually have to go in there, so I'm just gonna skip it. Um, the only thing really in there of any value is what's called a gold sculptula, and gold sculptulas are cool uh, because they're a collector thing. But I'm not going for a 100% run of this game, which may be an unforgivable sin. I don't know. Um, but for the sake of time, I'm not gonna go in that room because I just there's no need to. Um, so what we need to do is we need to try to jump down and fall through that web below us. Oh. I misjudged that. You gotta land in the middle. That's okay, it'll only take a second to get back up there. I love that little detail, that little sound effect of hearing the metal on his uh, sword, I'm guessing, clink, as he moves. You know, it's just a little detail that, you know, they didn't have to add that I think is really cool. Alright, here we go. 
There we go. And we land in the water. Now, we need to go up here, step on this, and that burns that web. We're good there. So that over there is a gold sculptula. There's also one up there, but again, I'm not really going to worry about them too much. And if I ever decide to get them, you have to come back here later on to get them all anyway, so I can just do it then. It's not the end of the world. Um, take out this guy. Please forgive me, Master. I'll never do it again. If you spare me, I'll teach you something cool. You will never beat my brothers up ahead, unless you punish them in the proper order. The order is two, three, one. Twenty-three is number one. Do you think I'm a traitor? Quite literally, yes. And I don't know why I'm giving him that voice. I hope nobody's offended. Uh, it just, I don't know. It just is. I also apologize if you can hear my birds in the background. Um, they tend to be a bit noisy sometimes when I record. Or at least they choose to pick that time to be noisy. Okay, so now this room. We're going to jump into the water. And, uh... Dive down. We have to hit this switch. So we have to hit the switch. It's going to lower the water level. Then I have to jump on that platform, go underneath the rolling spiked log, and jump to the other side before the water level goes back up. Which there's really it's plenty of time here. So I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, see, we're good. We jump. And I'm going to take him out. Get some rupees. Then we're going to push this block. Which this is another one of those classic Zelda things. Um, you know, the you know, moving blocks and jumping on them. Uh, or at least using them to get around a room. And I love that they took so many classic Zelda things that we loved about Zelda games before this and were able to bring it into a 3D world um, functionally, if that makes sense. I don't know, it's the little things that impress me about game development. Okay. I'm gonna take him out. We're going to get another item called Decker Nut. Is going to be useful for the boss. We really only need one uh, for the boss as long as I do it right. Um, like these. And then if you swing your sword before this burns up, I don't know if I said this already, uh, it'll put it away and it won't count that you've used it up. Uh, so it's a way you can use your Deku sticks and save them. got some baddies on the ceiling here that we've got to take out. So... Let's see if we can. Sometimes the hitboxes on them can be weird. There we go. You almost have to hit above them a little bit. Otherwise what drops down is a monster thing that you have to kill. It's like a baby arachnid spider. It's actually the child of the boss, Goma. We're going to see here in just a few minutes. Burn this web down. Clear away. Alright, we are rocking and rolling. Now, here, we need to push this over. We're, we were just in this room a minute ago. Jump over, and we're going to light a Deku stick. Now we need to take this one and go back across this way. Up 
here, and we need to roll. And jump down. And we land in water. We are almost to Goma, the boss. So, we need two. That one. And we need this one. And we need that one. How did you know our secret? How irritating! It's so annoying that I'm going to reveal the secret of Queen Goma to you. In order to administer the coup de grace to Queen Goma, strike with your sword while she's stunned. Alright, here we go. Boss fight time. So... Here we go. And this is only going to take a few minutes because... There's a... So I learned, I've learned since I was originally played this game, I originally thought there was a way you had to do this. Which, um, you do have to do, I believe, the first time, or at least I'm going to do the first time. Um, first off, we find her. There she is. Um, she's gonna drop down, and then I'm gonna stun her with a Deku Nut, and then strike her eye. Um... There I go, Sam. I'm gonna get one, but all right, whatever. Now she's gonna climb up, and I used to think I had to wait for her to drop back down, but it turns out I don't. I just have to wait for her eye to turn red and shoot it with a uh, slingshot. And every time you do a jump slash, you do double damage of what your normal slash would do. She's gonna climb back up. The eye turns. Red. And we take her out. And that's it. And that's the first boss fight. Um, we'll get through this, we'll get through the cutscene after, and then I'll save, and that'll be the end of this episode. Because uh, the next cutscene's gonna be a few minutes. But it's not gonna be too bad. Always remember to get the heart piece after each boss fight. If you ever forget, you can always go back to this room later and get it. Um, I think I, one time I missed one, I was very relieved I could go back for it later by going back into the dungeon and just going back to this room. But now we warp out. Well done, Retro. Thou hast verily demonstrated thy courage. I knew that thou wouldst be able to carry out my wishes. Now, I have yet more to tell ye. Wouldst thou listen? Now, listen carefully. A wicked man of the desert cast this dreadful curse upon me. It was such a great sinister shot the first time I saw it. This evil man ceaselessly uses his vile, sorcerous powers in his search for the sacred realm that is connected to high rule. For it is in that sacred realm that one will find the divine relic, the Triforce, which contains the essence of the gods. Before time began, before spirits and life existed, three golden goddesses descended upon the chaos that was Hyrule. Din, the goddess of power. Nehru, the goddess of wisdom. Feror, the goddess of courage. such interesting lore that they created for this game. For this timeline of Hyrule. 
Din. With her strong flaming arms, she cultivated the land and created the red earth. Nehru poured her wisdom onto the earth and gave the spirit of law to the world. Pharaoh, with her rich soul, produced all life forms who would uphold the law. Three goddesses, the three great goddesses, their labors completed, went off to the heavens, and Golda's sacred triangles remained at the point where the goddesses left the world. Since then, the sacred triangles have become the basis of our world's providence, and the resting place of the triangles has become the sacred realm. That suddenly went very fast in dialogue. Thou must never allow the desert man in black armor to lay his hands on the sacred Triforce. Thou must never suffer that man, with his evil heart, to enter the sacred realm of legend. That evil man, who cast the death curse upon me and sapped my power. Because of that curse, my end is nigh. Though your valiant efforts to break the curse were successful, I was doomed before you started. Yes. I will pass away soon, but do not grieve for me, I have been able to tell you of these important matters. This is Hyrule's final hope. Retro, go now to Hyrule Castle, there thou will surely meet the Princess of Destiny. Take this stone with you, the stone that man wanted so much that he cast the curse on me. Kiri's Emerald. The future depends upon thee, Retro. Thou art courageous. Navi the Fairy, help Retro to carry out my will. I entreat ye, Navi. Goodbye. This was an emotional scene. It still is. Like, that right there is beautiful beautifully done. Tragic, sad, but that was beautifully graphically done for me. Alright. It's interesting there for a brief moment. At the beginning of this, Navi kind of disregards you. And then now, after you... You know, after this whole exchange with the Deku Tree, she suddenly has a little more respect for you, I think. Anyway, that's going to end this episode. This was a long play. Uh, if you want me to keep playing, I will. Uh, let me know. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's save, and uh, I'll see you next time.